So hi, everyone. I'm really Hello. happy and honored to have you all here with me today. We're about to end 2020. And I thought since it was such an, an exceptional year, um, and I think, um, of course, for everyone, but um, for the playback community in particular, for many reasons, I thought it's a good opportunity to, to talk about a topic that I think interests um, interest many of the listeners of uh, playback theater talks, um, according to the feedbacks I'm, I'm getting, which is the uh, leadership. Uh, in playback theater and specifically um, leadership in times of change. I think um, we can put, uh, we can focus on that because we are now facing a lot of changes. Um, so I think we have quite a lot to talk about and you were all the first guests on my podcast. And so it feels really special to, to talk with you today in the end of this year. And I'm gonna start with a question. Um, I'm gonna start with a question. I'm gonna ask you to think of an image of you as a playback leader. What kind of an image? You can take your time and think. I know you weren't prepared for that, but uh, I, I thought it, it's going it's to be interesting to hear um, through the image what kind of a leader were you? If you were a leader in the past, some of you are still leading, um, some of you have led um, maybe, I know some of you led like Aviva, you were a leader of the international community and now you're um, also doing a lot of international things, but uh, more local. And so uh, you were all going through different phases and some of you are still doing certain things. I'm, I'm talking to give you time to think about the image because I know it, uh, it's a tricky question. So uh... shall we do it as a fluid? <laughs> <laughs> but if someone already has an image, then of course you, you can share. Otherwise, we, we can wait a few more um, I can go first. Yeah. OK, great. Thank you, Michael. Well, the, the image I have in mind is a uh, bonsai plant. Bonsai, bonsai uh, like planet. Miniature plants. Um, mm -hmm. I think particularly in times of change, but I think it's also a general philosophy where you know the roots really have to be strong. And to make the shape, you still have to regularly maintain and prune and pick off some leaves to make the shape. Uh, but at the same time, you're also taking, you're, you're not making it so artificial. You still want to see what is there before you decide where and where, and where it goes. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think the bonsai plant mm -hmm. is it's a, it's a good image for me. Mm, wow, what a great image. I, I, I will use that as well. <laughs> Sounds like a good image, but um, let's hear what else came to you when you had to think of an image describing you as a leader in playback. I can go. I have mm -hmm. one image which my company gave me 30 years ago. They said, you're like a galloping horse and we just try to catch up with you. <laughs> so mm -hmm. pulling through, going for an aim, pulling through. That uh -huh. was what the company gave me. And I could relate to this. And the other image, it's more like Michael's. It's like, uh, in German, it's Zeman, someone who, who throws the seeds in the earth, because I was quite a pioneer at that time. And it also felt like I throw, I threw seeds. And mm -hmm. from these seeds, not only my company came, but a lot of other companies or or actions or things so yeah mm. like the, the person walking on the field and throwing the seeds 
Mm, Maybe not so good in caring about it, but throwing the seeds. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're like you're task oriented, but you're also like a farmer. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. It's a tricky question. I can. Uh, yeah, I, can I know. Try, I know. Try, Sorry. Try to answer. <laughs> no. The images are fighting now inside my head. Well, you can. Uh... I, I have some some images, uh, and they are. You can still have more trying, than one. Like who is going? Uh... I I think I. I could use as an image what I strive for and what I try to be is kind of a chameleon who chooses his own colors, kind of <laughs> not, not just going by the environment without a conscious decision to go and somehow trying to, trying to understand what I try to do is usually try to understand the different different interaction systems that are going on in the room before I start poking it because otherwise it's you quite blind the poking and but that's something that that sort of I needs quite much practice like it comes with time and it's still developing hopefully okay I just yeah. mm -hmm. so the image was a chameleon who chooses his color <laughs> is not is not defined by the environment but can okay. can well, take I, different I, roles in different mm -hmm. nice um so <laughs> i i think that three images landed <laughs> okay uh, and I think really I know that doing it uh, more than 30 years, so maybe I can put the first image, the they are still mixing, but they, it's coming the first image, second, and now the third. So I think that the first image is, and it was given to me by one of a, uh, when I was playing cards, how do you call this? Uh, um, tarot cards. Mm -hmm. So it was a mother go goose mother, mother goose, goose mother. Uh -huh. You know, mother the chicken and the yeah. little uh, running after. Mm -hmm. And so that wasn't taking care and giving seeds and na 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 And then I was caught up in this image and I have to to free myself from mother goose. And the second image is, um, again, it's connected to plants. And I don't know the name of the plant, but it has this, uh, I will draw it very quickly. Da, 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 da. Da, da, da. It's something Oh, it looks like a messy hair, but it's, you have a plant. This is the, this is the, uh, how do you say, um, container. So you have a plant and it has this kind of leaves. Ah, okay. Out, yeah, many green leaves. And then it's taking out one branch mm -hmm. and the branch is going how far it can go and finding another piece of earth and making again these leaves and then there comes another and from this the main uh, plant coming many of these branches and they are making br uh, their own they're making their own plants and from these plants are coming branches and these branches they have very very interesting uh, quality it means they are a branch but the moment that they that they uh find a new piece of earth 
They are making roots of their own. They are making leaves on their own. And, and they are still connected to the mother branch. And the interesting thing that after a long time, some of the branches are, I mean, the connection, um, the connection branch mm -hmm. is kind of fading out and you have a whole field of many plants that are, uh, some mm -hmm. are connected to the main plant and some are letting go independent. But there is a similarity. They look, they belong to the same family. So this is my, wow, image. Mm. Uh, I think I will stay with this one. Nice, nice. I could um, imagine the play, the community and how, and especially when I'm thinking about you because you were a pioneer in Israel and uh, the development of so many plants were growing out of this uh, main, uh, main plant. So it's, it, yeah. I just want to say that I was just, when I was talking about that they are looking similar and they, they have their own earth and own roots, but they kind of look similar to the same family. So I want to say that sometimes they don't look the same. Mm -hmm. Just okay. Yeah. So. so it's nice. A lot of images from uh, nature, animals, uh, plants and all that. Um, yeah. So maybe I'll, I'll get right to the, the topic and I'll ask you um, who, maybe like, I'm gonna start with a very basic question. Who is a playback theater leader? Like, what is the definition of a playback theater leader? Is it, um, a lot of time we tend to think of it as a, a conductor or something like that, or someone with a certain title, but yeah, what, what does it mean to you to be, to be a leader? And can anyone be a playback leader? What, re what are the skills, what requires from a playback leader? I think I asked a lot of questions mm -hmm. just in one, but uh, you get the point. I, I can go. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there were a lot of questions, but good questions. Uh, like I think I, I start with this, can anyone be a playback leader? I think you need motivation and you need to understand that it's not, a walk, not an easy walk in the park to be leading a group that where people are handling their personal stories, which means that the emotional luggage is much bigger than in regular leadership roles where people stick to a professional theme and somehow kind of connect not through their stories but other interests and that is a playback leader for in Finland we we have groups that have separately the group leader separately the group leader and separately the artistic leader who usually does the conducting. And to me, leadership is very much um, kind of this idea of how to bring out the best in the group and different sort of groups need different kind of leaders and and uh, it groups in different phases need different kind of leaders and a playback leader is so I, I was thinking already before coming here that now am I here as the leadership trainer, which is a very different kind of leader role or as am I here as the artist who do, does his art with his playback group and kind of leads that or am I here as the IPTM president, which is again a very different leadership role because I'm not pushing that there, there, there it's kind of more a role of service than a role of leadership and more kind of, um, I'm not pushing IPTN as much to do my bidding as I do my playback group kind of, 
of course it's co-creation there but there we have a somehow it's it's kind of all also the place where i feel like i create my art through leadership and if you want to be a good leader one really important thing is that you really get to know yourself and understand what are your triggers what are your traumas what are you somehow dealing with so that you don't project all those just onto the group and give them the responsibility and i'm at the moment actually preparing for for my next leader role i just learned yesterday the gender we will have a little girl baby in may mm. and and, and thank you and then I kind of think that a good parent is pretty much what a good group leader is somehow helping to create a safe environment, but making themselves eventually unnecessary. Mm -hmm. In in a way that my my job is to empower the group, not not kind of see the group as an extension of me. Mm. And you're saying it requires a lot of like um, a lot of work. Um, it it does, and I I was a really bad, rather terrible leader like earlier, and I have really really put in so many hours. And when when I when I studied studied the stuff, I also realized what all I had been missing and why why I had had so many struggles, and somehow understanding that it's not just about my. Uh, like where this tension com comes from and how to handle conflict in a group where we deal with personal stories was a big, big learning process for me. I started leading because our previous leader quit and I mm -hmm. didn't choose that position. <laughs> I actually started IPTM presidency like that too. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's been a big learning process, but these days I feel like when early it was really, really stressful and really, really hard to go even to rehearsals to lead. Then at some point when you feel like you start having skills, when you start feeling fine, it's now it's a pleasure to lead rehearsals and because you know what you're doing and you have all these tools. But mm -hmm. Like whether you have the natural leadership in you or not, I think it's a skill that can be learned, but it's not a skill that that somehow comes easily. Yeah. Or that and, has been my path with leadership. And I, I think I think many can uh, identify with with what you you were saying. I think many leaders in in, in the playback community kind of um, forced <laughs> into the leadership role. It wasn't maybe their first choice, but it somehow uh, happened. I know for me, it was also happening this way. And yeah, and um, let, let's hear maybe more. I'm sure you have a lot to say about this question, especially now after hearing Yori's uh, answer. So I can go. <laughs> As my, uh, my journey was a little different because I came from a different starting point, which was, um, I was not thinking that I want to be a leader, but I really came and say, I want to make some different kind of theater, a new kind of theater. I want to have my group. I want to to do my to do it my way. I so there was something I, and I say that I have a want, so I have a passion and I have a drive to get to some kind of uh, of some kind of vision they have. I uh, and so I had the passion, I have the vision, and I had the, um, and I have some, and I have, of course, some, some models or some inspiration from Jonathan, from Christina, 
Halgeton, that was my first teacher. So I said, okay, they are my teachers. I learned from them, but I want to do it my way. So mm -hmm. I had a very strong drive. So already early on, you kind of knew you want to do things your own way. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I was not thinking about becoming kind of, you know, you know, the, when I'm a guru. Asking, <laughs> a, a, yeah, <laughs> no, I'm, and then, you know, today I'm sometimes people are asked when you said who, what make you a leader, um, what leader needs, I was asking myself, you know, in a very kind of, Okay, so if I'm called to the leader and I'm and I am a kind of leader, what made me? I'm asking myself. So look at yourself. Kind of putting back the the how to say the um, Binocular, inside the, myself, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I say, Aviva, stop being modest. Really, what made you? And maybe I was not thinking about it in the beginning because I wanted one group and my group. Mm -hmm. I want my theater. And that was very clear. Mm -hmm. How to build the group, what to put into the group, how to handle conflict, competition, all the things. I had to learn, to develop it, uh, to take supervision. So it was a very, very uh, kind of... Um, um, I say challenging road with lot of um, with mm -hmm. lot of bumpers. So I have to take help or instructions or to learn and to bleed and to open up how to do it with my one group. And mm -hmm. this group is working and and uh, uh, practicing playback until today. So something. Was 30 working. years, right? 30 years. So the same years, yeah. core of four. Uh, anyway, so it's so something was working there. So I was asked, and then it, as you say, in Israel, it developed like another plant, another plant, like very small country, and people like it. So they see, okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was asking myself what was that I had the vision, the passion. Uh, the drive, and then probably some professional skills that people could trust that where I'm taking them or I'm what I'm offering, it's something that they can relate to, that they can learn, that they can develop. For the, it means professional skills that they can trust, understand and feel safe. Mm -hmm. And the other thing was the, so professional skills and then the personal skills. So how um, the personal, what Yuri was talking, the personal development for myself and how to handle a group. So it was psychotherapy, it was psychodrama, it was supervision many years, even until today. If I have a need, I have a supervision. I can call, oh, I have something I want to discuss. Oh, so mm -hmm. never ending story of self-development. Mm -hmm. And the third thing was the playback professional skills. When I say before professional skills, because I'm coming from playback that is playback theater. So I believe in the professional skills that people or people that follow my way could trust the professional skills of theater and then the professional skills of playback, all the rituals, all the forms, all the innovation, all the um, structures, all the, uh, the, the values, all the ethics, all whatever is connected today. You know, I have six books, all the books that were translated, uh, that were written in Hebrew and also in the world, and I do read them. So, mm -hmm. and uh, international conferences and keeping in touch with what's going in the world. So what I'm saying, there was a lot of work. 
mm -hmm. never ending work of, and you know, if we are talking about the three circles of good playback, so I think you have the good circle of the three circles of the, you know, you have the art that the conductor needs, the professional, you have the social development and understanding of social interaction and group and whatever, and you have the playback rituals and the playback um, values that you have to to own and understand. And if you change something, you have to understand why. If you bring something new, it's connected to the main, I say it's the same family. So it's it's a journey, it's a lot of work. And I would say also maybe something that, you know, some kind of personal, when I'm thinking about other leaders, not only myself, which is also me, you need some kind of, um, I don't know how to the name, something that people want to look at you, that they want to listen to you, that they're ready to follow you. It's mm -hmm. something that is, you can develop it. Maybe exactly. charisma or something like that, like a charisma. Okay, yeah. It's but it's interesting of... because we are, I think playback leaders are so different than one another. Okay. Another. So, so it's, I... it's interesting. So that's, so now the second, so this is, I say, my way or my. And then I'm looking around and I see that for different groups and in different cultures and in different, so there are many styles of leaders. I do think that, you know, charisma can be something very subtle, very simple, very quiet, and people just come to you. And charisma can be something very bubbling and, you know, like if we're talking about, you know, even talk about Jonathan or about Joe Salas, or I'm talking about very different, mm -hmm. or around the world, if I'm looking, about you know different leader they are different but they have this something that people trust and, mm -hmm. and want to follow them okay so that's what i that was my leadership speech <laughs> okay interesting i'm curious to hear karen and uh, michael um take on on leadership in playback, what it takes to be a, a playback leader. Shall I go? <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so many things have been said when I started, I wasn't also not clear what it meant. I just wanted to do playback theater. Mm -hmm. And the very tricky thing is that it's somehow playback has this democratic approach no, on the stage, on rehearsal, we're kind of equal. And still, there needs to be a leader. So many people who joined me were also attracted by this democratic way of cooperating in the theater. But I was somehow giving everything, uh, everything. I was planning the rehearsals, giving the material, renting the spaces, organizing everything. So I was a kind of hidden leader, but we pretended like, oh, it's so democratic. Mm -hmm. And being a hidden leader was a really backfire because I was ready for all those projections I got, even as, as a hidden leader. Uh, why were you a hidden leader? Why weren't you just going for it and saying, okay, I'm I a did. leader? Eventually I took supervision and after two years of chaotic, so-called mm -hmm. democratic things where I was doing all the work, and disappointed when it wasn't uh, approved, I decided to become a leader mm -hmm. and say, I'm the leader, I'm the one telling. But mm -hmm. it was, I had to, so what it takes to be a leader is to be ready to step in the role and say you are a leader. I think mm -hmm. that's the main thing, the decision. I want to be a leader and then deal with what's coming up. And as Aviva and Yori said, a lot's coming up. Me too, I had supervision. I had terrible nights. I had, you know, it was really learning and growing process. But mm -hmm. I think from nature, I am, I am a leader. So I don't think everybody can or everybody wants to be a leader. I don't think so. I think it's, it's a gift you have. 
And there's a lot of prices you're saying. There are prices. Pay. There are all these prices you pay. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, I think. So we need. You're saying we need a distinct. In, even though we are very democratic and we want to to be, um, um, I don't know how to. We want to contain well. and collaborate and all that. We do need a leader. We do need someone that's gonna. I to all my, this role. Mm -hmm. I think there are different models in the playback world. Very interesting yeah. models where they mm -hmm. change leadership, but it needs to be clear. However, you do clear. it, you need everyone needs to to be clear. You need to have rules, even if the rules are we don't have rules, mm -hmm. but you need some containers for the different things to make it workable. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you lose in power struggles, in 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 projections, in whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I but see I people think, are nodding. <laughs> yeah, I don't think a, a, a company just needs one leader. You know, you can play with it. I wasn't ready to play with it, to be honest. I want, I, it turned out that I really wanted to be the leader. Mm -hmm. But it took me courage to, to tell it and to do it. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, I confronted some resistance. Mm -hmm. So as a leader, you also need to be ready to not be liked. And in playback, okay. that's also tricky because you're also sharing. No? But sometimes mm -hmm. you take decisions people don't like. Yeah, so I think this is... Yeah, that's the biggest price you have to pay. That's the leader. biggest price yeah. to deal mm -hmm. with what's coming. And it's not about you as a person, it's about you as a role. But still, the person at my role, it's it's kind of joined together. So how, you know, it, it wasn't always easy to tell myself, yeah, it's just my role. They don't mean me personally. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Michael, thank yeah. You. Can I just say one comment because this mm -hmm. I just realized something from what Karin said that being being a leader can be very hard because of this really this urge to please and mm -hmm. these projections that you get and these these the hate that you sometimes get that's kind of one of the big things that really you need to be able to face as a leader and understand that what Karin said, that it's the role and it's your kind of parent role of the group that gets these projections. But also groups in different phases need different kind of leaders. If people are beginning playback, it's totally different than leading a group that has been there already for 30 years, like Aviva's group or 15 years, like my group, where people are professional actors and somehow they need a different kind of guidance also because they want to be led differently. They wouldn't take mm -hmm. take the same kind of leading I would do on a playback theater ABC course. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I'm, I'm so glad that we um, we're talking about those things so early in our in our talk. Um, yeah, those prices that we pay and uh, desire to be liked. And yes, Michael. Well, I think to add to what Yuri is saying, um, you know, it, it's, I might phrase it a different way. Um, one thing to be liked, uh, perhaps another way of saying is, is how the leader wants to be looked upon or to be viewed. And sometimes that influences our decisions. Um, I think it's also a good time to, to make a distinction between uh, being a leader and the decision making models the leader uses with the group. So I think you know you, you, you can be seen as a leader, you might be given leadership, but how it actually unfolds in terms of making a decision, in terms of how the rehearsal comes about, in terms of you know making decisions about who gets paid what, I think that can be very different. Um, I, I think I'll begin with uh, can anyone be a playback leader? I think it's the same as doing playback. Anyone can do playback. Anyone can be a playback leader, but to do it well, you need certain conditions. You need the external conditions, uh, but at the same time, like what many have already said, the internal conditions, your work with yourself, how you are, what kind of biases you have, what kind of um, experiences you have had. Um, I think it's important to be very aware of that and to work towards um, 
a model that it, that works with the particular organization or group. Mm -hmm. um, and I think there are many kinds of leaders in the playback context. You have the group leader, the playback group leader, um, who can be a leader in terms of um, the artistic vision or the organizational structure. That's one kind of leadership, uh, one kind of leader. Uh, a second one is, um, you know, somebody who's really experienced, who has been um, teaching a lot, who is kind of like the holder of knowledge and traditions. Um, you know, we're talking about, you know, for example, Aviva, Karin, I think you guys are in, in, in that category, Jonathan. People just look to you guys with or without an official position because of your various experiences in playback. So that's another category. And the third is um, leaders within the playback community, uh, whether they have been given or have, whether they are in positions or not, but they have a certain influence in the community. It might be the local playback community, it might be regional or, or global. Um, and they have these, uh, they are leaders because of the positions they hold, because of the acknowledged quality of work on, in playback that they do, or just basically because of their seniority. So I think each of these different roles will require different skills, um, require different kinds of models. Um, and I really like all the leadership images that are coming up because you know, I'm realizing there isn't one particular image because it's all contextual. It's all in different stages, different situations. You need to sometimes be the galloping horse. You need to sometimes be the chameleon. You need to sometimes just be the plant um, and spread, mm -hmm. in, uh, spread in different ways. Uh, so so that's, that's, that's something that um, I want to bring to the table for discussion. Um, mm -hmm. I, I find it really hard to, to describe what a leader needs um, because it's such a difficult issue. Uh, but I do agree, you do need to, at some point in time, even if it's to yourself, say yes to taking leadership. Then you can start to do the work that's needed to become a leader for that particular group whatever mm -hmm. the model of operation is, whatever the leadership structure might be. Yeah, so... Um, and, yeah. Sorry, one mm -hmm. last thing to add, um, which came up, I think, as Karin was talking, I was, and this is also a question for, that I've had for many years, which is where does the, where does the leader tell, tell stories about leadership? Um, when, does, when, sorry, can you repeat that? Where does the when? leader tell stories about leadership? Uh-huh, okay. And, and I'm, I'm thinking back to when at one time I was in three playback groups and I was like, okay, I can't tell this story there because, you know, there's some, you know, people know people and people know people and, and but then I, there are stories that I want to tell about the difficulties of different groups. Um, mm -hmm. So you either tell that to your therapist, to your wife or, or to the trees, maybe, mm -hmm. I don't know. But you, you, you know, you're, 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 you're touching on, uh, sorry. In earlier times in the German uh, speaking world on the gatherings, we had special gatherings for leaders. It was fantastic. We did, it was so nice to hear that everyone deals with the same issues. You know, for me, it was like a burden just hearing people not attending rehearsals and whatever people doing groups and having leaders to share it was fantastic so that's a tip actually for leaders to get together and have an intervision group yeah I, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up Michael because I think leaders um, it's a very lonely role you can be very isolated and yeah so I think it's really important to form or be part of a community with other leaders. I'm just going to so, pull the curtains for a second because I'm really flickering. I think the camera doesn't uh, like the redness. In the, so I'm sorry, just a sec one second. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I think that's good. For some reason, the camera reacts and the background color changes ah. constantly. And I started staring at it and then I started oh, feeling a bit. I, kind of thought, I thought it's a special effect. Yeah, me too. I liked yeah. it. <laughs> it's like Christmassy color. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I want to, to say something to follow this, uh, the loneliness uh, of the leader or the the loneliness of the leader and also the support for the leader. 
And I know that in leadership class or workshop, we have a special event or a special, uh, um, a special, how do you say, um, a special action or a special time for support for leaders. I want to share something that is happening really in Israel that is something very, I think, um, very, very nice. Uh, it started many years ago that when we have this kind of, there were many leaders, it was, I was kind of a leader, but there was group conductors and, and leaders that were more in certain communities. So it started with form, it was created the Forum of Leaders. Forum? How is yeah, it? Forum. Forum, forum yeah. of Leaders. And uh, it developed into the Association of Leaders. But I want to say what's happening now. Now we have, beside the association of the Israeli playback, there is a forum of leaders. And it means, and the focus is of not training, but support for leaders. It means that it's place where you can share knowledge and mainly you can share what is um, what is difficult your stories so it is done like like once a month once in six months there is a, in six weeks there is a, a lecture or some kind of activity about one of the subjects that are challenging for leadership that are mm -hmm. leadership challenges styles like, of like yeah. styles of leadership group dynamic uh what conflicts is, uh, conflict uh, resolutions uh, different stages of group development like the beginning of the blue middle all the subjects that are connected to leadership from from leadership side i mean not how you teach playback or how you and then we we break up and there are i think nearly the 30 lead uh, conductors there then we break up into small groups of six or five or seven and each of the elders like myself and some others are the leaders the lead of it and then you can decide what will be the culture or the context of these six people that are meeting they can tell their stories they can ask for help they can share difficult moments and the group in a, in kind of all dynamic or playback tools doesn't matter the group can choose what tools is giving the support but but aviva in israel there's a lot of uh, like it's a big community many playbackers that uh, I'm, I'm getting like a lot of messages from playbackers that are listening uh, here in the podcast and a lot of them are really isolated. They don't, they don't have those resources. They, they don't have a community. And I think actually now, because now of the with the Zoom, that's uh, what I want to, yeah. That's what I want to say, that now with the Zoom, it's changed. This same kind of model you can do, and I think it started to be done around the world, that there are kind of support groups or... Uh, you know, like now we decide, we can decide we are now one, two, three, four, five leaders. Let's meet every, I don't know, two months and tell or our, instead of our philosophy about leadership, our stories about leadership. Yes, let's. No, I'm just kidding you. Okay. Uh, but so, sure, that would be amazing. <laughs> but yeah, this is the way I, I, I think now we have an opportunity to to form those kind of um, communities, those virtual communities for uh, leaders and uh, help with um, these issues of loneliness of the of the playback yeah. conductor or the playback leader. Um, I I want to ask you another question. Um, what what is important? what was or what still is important to you as leaders what were your uh, unique contribution or something that you um you wanted to promote or still wanting to promote as leaders i can maybe answer this from the perspective okay. of 
Ah, oh, sorry, I just started. It's Where okay. you cutting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I started to go already and look away, like go into my thoughts, didn't even notice. So uh, yeah, I think as the leader of IPTN, what I have really, really tried to do is to be approachable to everyone and somehow try to somehow dismantle a bit this role of the president, which sometimes has has these huge projections on it and somehow people sometimes see see kind of different people have different needs regarding the president and also see my role very differently and what i what i have tried to do is to really be there and listen and not know everything and be fine with not knowing everything and somehow being the leader of a worldwide organization requires super much conscious effort if you want to somehow keep the diversity if you want it to somehow be inclusive and and not kind of be more concentrating on the needs of the few because the people who are active of course they are the ones who also put every effort in so the big question is how to involve people who are not somehow already involved and how to approach each each kind of particular playback culture and and somehow somehow it has been quite a journey to like be in three different continents con on three different continents witnessing very different cultures regarding leadership and also like how leaders are seen somewhere i have gotten much respect that i felt like i did not yet deserve at that moment like just because i was the leader and in some places like finland they couldn't give a shit if i'm the president of ipt and i'm still just yori who has bad jokes and <laughs> that's that's kind of of course it has some 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 meaning but anyways the point is that also the cultures around leadership are very different in different cultures in different parts of the world and it's been my big that's why i feel like it's really this chameleon choosing my colors and what i have tried to also do is to keep true to myself and say only things I can stand behind as a human being and not try to become a leader that is somehow guided but by what other people just just by what other people want and need but also I have really and that's something that's very easy to get lost in kind of losing my own values because I have such a need to please the group but as a President, I've really tried to stay true to who I am, and that's been a challenge with all the projections coming my way. Thank you. I would just so I no, just one word before okay. I said, like me and Yuri are kind of uh, coming from different starting points like in a, like i see we are talking about leadership in your group in your community in the playback community and then you have also the leadership of an organization which is a different and as i had the and then leadership in in education playback i mean leadership as lead leading in leadership teaching around the world or teaching in the in the you know the the leadership course, which is kind of uh, the how you call it the 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 how to say you, the university of playback or something. So uh, so you know, coming from the experience, I experience these roles kind of differently. And uh, like for my first role to be a leader of a group and to lead a group, it was I would choose it. I came with a passion to become a, the IPTN uh, president. It was kind of I was thrown into it and I didn't know what to do. And I have to learn 
by, you know, by stepping and slowly and trying to understand. And truly, I don't know if I figure it out properly until even the end of my, of my, it was the, the most difficult leadership. So I said, okay, probably there is something I have to present. And it was a very different leadership. I mean, those days than today that it is very much on the web and very much, much more organized. So anyway, so it was a different learning and the different process, very challenging for me. Uh, so, and also I said to myself, Aviva, be what you are and present the values, the artistic values, the playback values, the, I mean, pre present or, uh, yeah. And the third leadership of teaching is something uh, that I believe it's coming also with some experience and journey. But, uh, but what, what I wanted really to say when, when I was listening to it, came to my word, to my mind, the word responsibility. Like there is something when I, or I choose to be a leader, or I'm chosen to be a leader, or I'm putting into the position to be a leader, there is something that I say, okay, there is responsibility that I have to take on myself or go away, don't do it. Mm -hmm. So there is some, some, I call it responsibility and uh, there is a, um, it's more than responsibility. It's something that you are, um, you know, now it's coming. Like there is a, a say, I don't know if you have it also, it's in French or in German, noblesse oblige, noblesse oblige. It means the nobles are obliged. You have a responsibility. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a responsibility. There are certain things you have to take care of, to do, and sometimes to give up what you feel now, what you want or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the, the prices so, that... Uh... Yeah, so I like, the, I like the word responsibility. Okay, thank you. Karin, I think you wanted to say something also. I, I don't agree that you require different skills, whether you lead a playback company or an agency or whatever. I think mm -hmm. there are some crucial values which make a good leader. And for me, it's the the the, the the, the most important one, it's clarity. You need to be clear, clear about your own goals. What do you want? What's your goal? Let's say I wanted to have a professional playback group which does performances and is paid. That was ever my goal, even when I started as a tiny nobody. So I had a goal. Then I need to be clear how to communicate this. So communication, uh, to me, it's the other big skill you need. You need to communicate with your people. And of course, there are better and, and less good ways to communicate, but somehow you need to in, be in communication with all the, the people that you are collaborating with. And you need to have a kind of the quality of the communication, the, the quality of the contact also will decide how successful are you as a leader or not. That's what you said, Aviva, also about your inner words. No, uh, who am I? Am I choleric? Am I patient? So of course, this needs work on myself, as for example, in my case, as a very passionate uh, person, I learned to be more calm and to tame myself. So, for me, it's uh, clarity, communication, and contact. That's that's for me the key things for a for a leader. Mm -hmm. Three C, three C, three C. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and of course you can have under title. I mean, with determination, sometimes you need to let go of your original plan or adapt. Maybe not let go, but kind of you know bend it a bit to make mm -hmm. things work. But 
for me, and it doesn't matter whether you read a kindergarten, you lead a, 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 a I don't know, a big company. I think, yeah, it's values which just make a leader a good leader or a, not a successful leader. Mm -hmm. And I want to add to this, um, you need to give roles and to have a good team to do different roles in your organization or in your group or in your, how do you say, to... to Delegate? To give, Delegate? Uh, I mean, there are some groups that there is a completely democratic or they change roles. Doesn't matter. You need to have, like, if I'm not good in organization, I have somebody doing, taking this role in a in a better way that I can do. And also, so you need a good team to do things together, uh, different roles. And also, uh, like you said before, Karen, that if you do all these things, and that was one of the, of the suffering of leaders in the beginning, that they did everything and they collapsed. So how do you share your... Um, how you share the Responsibility. you sh responsibilities, duties, uh, roles, uh, and um, yeah. So this mm -hmm. is uh, teamwork is uh, important. Yeah. yeah, Michael, I'm also curious what you think. Um, for me, what's important uh, are the values. Um, but also, and also a sense of vision, a particular vision. Um, I think in my case, uh, it, is, it is always about the image of, you know, strengthening the roots. Um, and then when it comes the what, to- The what, the what? When it comes to strengthening the roots of the bonsai plant, for example. Um, then when it comes to certain decisions, you know, you can refer to, I, I can refer to that. You know, should, should I be delegating or not? In some context, obviously, to add delegate means to make the roots stronger. Um, in some context, hey, let's we have to do this gathering, you know, so let's gallop ahead because we have the gathering and that makes the roots stronger. Mm -hmm. So I think to have a clear um, vision, it's, it's really quite important for the leader. Otherwise, you would tend to, you know, in the first year, you want to have this. And in the second year, you're listening to what somebody else is saying and in the third year, so on and so forth. Um, so I think that has been uh, the, the, the basis of, of my work, I guess, whether it is in Singapore, whether it's within the group, whether it is um, internationally on behalf of the center. I think it's about what can we um, create amongst ourselves, exchange information and knowledge and skills amongst ourselves so that the, the roots can be strengthened. So if I was to have an event, does it strengthen the roots or does it just give you know, a person or a group to showcase their skills? Um, and, and I think that also comes about because um, in, in Singapore for a long time, there was only one group. So in order to grow, many of us had to go outside to workshops and, and, and for trainings. And I think you know, we, we, feel, we feel it when the roots are right. We feel like you know the growth is in the right direction. We are growing well, um, and and you know in today's world, for example, anybody can go onto Zoom and do playback now. But it's so important for the roots to be strong. I think you know since March we've we've had so many shows um, that have really began to be clear that this is actually a good time for us to be um, exploring what actually is playback. When can it work and when can it not work? And it comes to roots. For example, conducting roots needs to be so strong, especially in an online show. And I think that really came across for me in these few months. Um, if the center of playback was to do a particular kind of training, is it just about teaching people how to do playback, like artistry, how to act better? Or do we offer something um, like how to teach playback? Because that's more impactful for the roots of playback. So that I think impacts the kind of decisions or the kind of directions that, that I would want to go, um, both as a group and the community as well as the global community. Yes, Yuri. I, I just want to add, I'm somehow very inspired by this conversation. 
just want to add one thing that I feel like is is very crucial for leaders is to ask themselves the question, why do I want to be a leader? Because if you are doing it for a reason that somehow is not fulfilling you, and if you are doing it for a reason that somehow eats more than gives, then that's usually when these stories of the leaders and conductors who burn out come. For example, if you're leading just because everybody gave you the role, but you don't get anything out of it, then then it's probably not a very long-term role unless you find some approach to it that you, that you can actually enjoy it. And I know this from personal experience because my first years of leadership were hell, like literally so difficult to manage this group of professional actors who had all these expectations for me. And I was the youngest member <laughs> the group and just the, just the only one who said like okay I can try to lead and mm -hmm. it was really it was a long yeah. time before I realized what actually motivates me and I didn't want to somehow acknowledge my dark sides maybe I did, wanted to see myself as this holy leader who is there for everyone and just gives and gives and gives because I'm such a good person which is a very inviting thought for leaders because you kind of get this sort of feedback sometimes and it starts to also affect your identity. But then I, then I also realized many things like regarding that, okay, yeah, I like, I like control. I like to somehow put things into a direction that I see like a good direction. And I felt like I had often good ideas regarding that. I also like the attention and the thank yous. So I, I became very aware of what kind of an attention seeker I am. And I know, I know for example, that I, I usually try, try to be humble, but of course there's the performer and the, uh, everything, the ego of the performer also in there. I do did get super much satisfaction when I could perform alone with a guitar in front of the uh, conference in India, uh, like it was not just a selfless act of, hey, I want to give these people the experience of my guitar playing and singing, but it was also a personal choice that I want to do this performance for these people. And somehow I think it's very good for a leader to be very honest, at least to themselves about why they do it, what they want from it, and have these things that keep you going because if you just rely on thank yous, uh, then, then it's, it's a pretty messy world if you just kind of lead in terms of trying to have other people see you in a certain way. But if you kind of also know what, what makes you tick, then you have a longer career. Um, I, I just want to say I lost you for a, a minute, um, a few seconds, because I have like I had issues with connection. But uh, okay. I was uh, really identifying. I, I really relate to what you were saying, and um, I, I want to say that it is really important to think about the roots and the reasons and how we can make the roots um, um, stronger and more sustainable and all that but we also need to pay attention we, we need to take care of ourselves as, as leaders i think this is also something uh, and um, hearing all of you talking and describing your journeys i thought how important it is to to yeah to take care of ourselves i want to add to this something that it's i mean Maybe it belongs to the same thing of taking care of myself. I relate again to Yuri's, <laughs> resonate with what Yuri said. It's really, what really inside me, what drives me to, to be in this uh, role or in this position or to do it. Uh, what personal needs uh, to be seen, to be heard, to be in control and what professional needs or uh, or aspirations so to be to be aware of it and what i say to to make to, to let i would lead them and not they lead me 
So I'm in control. I can choose and I can be aware of. And I was also kind of uh, thinking about what you said, Noah. It was the second uh, part of your question. What is keeping us here to, I mean, to keep doing it now or to keep on doing it? And I can only talk about myself, like what it's changed when I was, you know, 30 years ago or 20 years ago, or it's, cha it's changing now, and especially in the Zoom time, and also in what is going in the community and the new leaders that are growing up. So, and it's very interesting that when we, I'm looking at this picture of the five of us, we have this kind of, like you are the youngest and maybe I'm the oldest, I don't know if Karin and I, we started at the, nearly the same time, but you know, I started playback in 1988. So it was really kind of the other. So, and I feel very much like on the edge of, of you know, ending my role. And my third image was that I am, you know, the old bird, bird that was once flying on the sky is now sitting on one of the branches of the tree and the flock, flock of, of birds are kind of are on the head. So, and I, shall I fly? Shall I not fly? Oh, somebody else is leading. But I have so much still to to oh you're it's not the right direction oh do it shut mm -hmm. up Aviva now it's the others time let them make their mistakes so I say okay I'm here and I'm full of knowledge and I'm happy to share it and if you want come to my tree and if you if you want me to come to you. I can on Zoom come to you, but it's not so much about leadership. It's more about, you know, the old teachers that are sitting there and um, looking the young flying up. And even what you are doing here, you are building up your leadership. Noah, mm -hmm. like talking the old leader, talking to the young one. Like this is also your way. I, I think mentorship, I think it's such, and, and supervision, um, I think it's so important in playback. Um, and I'm so glad that all of you mentioned that in, in some way or another. And, and also how difficult and challenging it is. We're all going, we're all starting this journey. And I think many of us don't expect it to be so demanding and so complicated. And uh, but it's also building character, of course. Like uh, as uh, as you mentioned. And I'm sorry, Michael, you wanted to yeah, say something. Yeah, so Michael wanted to say something. Well, reflecting on my journey, I I started to do playback because I wanted to perform. I became a conductor, I became a leader also, you know, it's a desire, a personal desire to want to perform, you know. So uh, I'm kind of resonating with Yuri. We, we can work on ourselves, but uh, I also have to acknowledge that that comes up from time to time. Uh, but through the years, at some point in time, um, there was, a, 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 the, the change was that playback became bigger than me. You know, I started to think about, um, you know, good enough playback. I started to think about good enough playback, not just by, for myself, but for the group, for the community, um, uh, the local community, and, and of course, the global community. So it, it became more about, okay, what, what does somebody who is doing playback need? What does the community need? Um, and it became less about myself, of being wanting to be in a certain position. Um, you know, and I enjoy teaching. I think that's also one place where you know the desire to perform comes up I think you know I, I see some notes I think you know that is uh, common in some of us um, it's, and you it's, are really good at teaching like loved your workshop thank, thank you Yuri. Um, so so you know that's that's the teaching leader but that's also the the, the community leader um, and I, I'm kind of trying to remember some of the faces over the years of who I might say is a leader leader 
you know, they, and for some reason, they're always very, um, you know, selfless, you know, they're, they're, they're not so much of a putting themselves forward, but they're allowing things to grow, groups to grow, people to grow. Uh, and, and I think we, in, in our particular context in playback, we are about inviting stories. We're not about saying you share and you share. Um, and I think that is also a value that playback leaders can hold on to. How do we invite growth rather than to pull everybody to try and grow? Um, so so that's, that's something that I am working on. Um, I, I feel like also there are two things that um, well, one thing that was really strong for me was when I was um, in one of the psychodrama sessions that I did quite a few years back. Um, and I guess this is where the self-work is important because then I realized where the desire to perform, where the desire to be seen is coming from and what the actual need is. You know, that, and that helps me to let go of many things when it comes to leadership. Uh, and the other thing that comes to mind is something very practical. Like I like to read a lot of uh, biographies um, of leaders, of country leaders, of you know corporate leaders. I'm not saying everything translates, you know, but it helps to, um, in some ways, from their stories gain strength because they went through also the, the the successes, the failures, the trying many different things, and also more importantly, there's just some things that you can't manage because it's external. You can only manage what you how you respond and how you feel about it. But you know, many times, I think being a leader means to let go. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, Yari, you want to I, say something? I just be, be, the tricky thing I is think... when, to, when to let go and when to hold on. That's, you know, I mean, it's so, it, I was, I think one of the success uh, I had in my professional playback life is that I didn't, some things I would never let go. We had some huge crises in the groups. I mean, probably you know all of that. Inside I knew, if everyone leaves today, tomorrow I'm gonna start a new group because I just want to do this. So this was one thing I would never had let go. But of course, other things, Michael, you're right. You, it's this thing, when do you let, what do you let go and when? And for example, I also missed to let go in time to have a transition for a new leader. I tried, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't let go of my baby group, which wasn't a baby group, which was a very, like Aviva's 30 years, very old group. So, but somehow, and looking back, I said, yeah, in a perfect world, I could have done maybe a transition to another leadership. So there I couldn't let go, which wasn't good for, yeah, no, I, I just couldn't let go. So yeah, how, when, what, what and when to let go? I think that's, that's a great question. That would be a great theme for an essay to write in playback. So yeah. if, you, if there are students who do leadership, write about this. It reminds me of this, uh, how does it call this serenity prayer or something like that? Uh, God, give me the power to know when, I forgot now how it goes, but yeah, it's the difference it's, between what? Yeah, to know yeah. the difference and uh, I'll, I'll put it on the description. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Before, before uh, Yuri speaks, um, you know, the, this is what I find interesting in many biographies about leaders, because they always have to think about when and how to go to, to, to let go to the next generation, the next leader. Some just hold on too long, some just tries different things. And, and you know, so that's something that I really find interesting in many books about um, leaders and their biographies. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Yuri. No, no, I actually wrote what I originally wanted to say already to the chat that we practice letting go our whole lives until we have the big letting go at the end of our lives. And it is somehow, it's an interesting skill because every time I have been able to truly let go, I feel so happy and fulfilled mm -hmm. when I succeed. But <laughs> it's when I, when I don't, I, I also can identify with Karin's, Karin's, Karin's struggle with giving up leadership on some groups. Uh, but I was, I, I actually now have been thinking, because I, I respect you all as leaders very much. And I think 
it's always nice to demystify us a bit. That's what I like to do about myself. So I wondered if we would be interested to share about what do we struggle as leaders with? What are our kind of, because I think it's always very nice to hear what people struggle with. And that's how I also feel that yeah. this peer, peer support thing, I guess that's very much what is shared in this Israeli new place, like what people struggle with so that they can get support with that. Yeah, it's, it's a great question. Uh, I think some of you already shared your struggles, but if you have maybe an example of a specific crisis or a moment that you maybe you wanted to, you were just saying, okay, I'm going to throw it all. I, I don't care anymore. I, I don't want to see those people or I don't know what, but uh, if you have a moment of crisis and what helped you um, overcome this moment, um, or you could say in general, struggles as as leaders but if you have a specific example i think that could be helpful to some of our listeners i have very specific examples mm -hmm. so um one big crisis was like secret competition in group or from my point of view it was like on someone undermining the group Mm -hmm. And I didn't, I didn't want or I didn't realize for a long time. And I tried to keep it together and include this person and please this person. And the more I tried, the worse it got. Until finally, finally, after a couple of years, really we separated. And this person did a new group. And then from then we went separate ways and it was okay. But it was mm. terrible because the whole atmosphere was strange. I was attacked all the time uh, from here. Yeah, it, it, so if you have a group, a person in the group with which you as a leader don't click at all, uh, I would say get rid of the person. It's not a very playback -y thing to say. No, no, it's interesting <laughs> that you're saying that. But when, when do we know we reach this, uh, you know, the point of, okay, I have an issue. It's that an is a rule. Issue. Usually you wait too long. It's mm -hmm. like in a relationship. We always wait too long. If you feel like it's not working, I mean, I know. And then you stay and you yeah, maybe the Indians call it to ride a dead horse. Do, do you mm. think like a, a leader should have like a special... Um, a privilege about this thing like if a leader has an issue with someone in the group it's um it should require a different kind of treatment than i yeah. don't know a conflict with yeah because if the leader is attacked it it's more it's it's, it's well of course if two members don't get along so well it's also not so good mm -hmm. but if the leader is really being undermined and attacked I think it's bad for the, the atmosphere was really difficult in the group. They kind of didn't know to whom should they go. Should they trust me? Should they trust the other person? So mm -hmm. it somehow I, connects yeah. also for the clarity about being it's a leader. About the clarity. I, I am a leader and it's and not I about like saying, maybe special, I no, have a special position in a way. I must be, I must feel comfortable and I must feel that I'm being trusted to be a good leader. If mm -hmm. someone in the group constantly attacks me and tells me I'm doing the wrong thing and blah, 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 I cannot be a good leader. Mm -hmm. So uh, talking about roots, what Michael said, what makes the group go well? It's like a safe, nice atmosphere. And of course there can be crises. And the, and the leader also has those needs. And the leader course. also yeah. has mm -hmm. those needs, mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. that's uh, that's one of the things I would say to address conflict early. And if you can't solve it, separate. I totally agree somehow with Karin regarding that. And I think it's the responsible thing to do because that particular group member probably is not being, feeling the happiest in your leadership either. So it's they probably, I think every leader should lead a group where they feel that everyone is welcome. That's the projection these group members have for us are as the parents of the group. And if the parent says that, no, I, I don't want you to be here, it creates a constant tension and trauma in the group. So mm -hmm. if you cannot deal with some- And the other some way around. 
the yeah, other way around yeah, as well. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's also ethical for the member that's kicked out. I always say to uh, when when I do teacher training and all that stuff, if you notice that you really hate or don't like some of your pupils, consider giving that pupil to another teacher because they then might have the chance to develop but, a better relationship. But we, we, I think it's important, now we're, we're saying that, but I think it's important to say that this kind of action makes, uh, causes a very big reaction in the group. It's a, yeah. uh, it's a very big event to the group to have the leader asking someone to leave and that also has prices and you need to take that under consideration that this action gonna have after effects that might gonna stay with you you know you but might it gonna... also has if you don't do it it yeah. also has if you don't do it and it also depends how you do it you know it's not about telling this person i've i've had it leave there are some now it's a process how to do it how, how to say goodbye to someone and in this case this person was also ready to leave and to do her own thing i think this person she was afraid to do her own thing and he needed that kick that she would really do it so and it served then, both of you in, in it a way served both of us yeah. yeah, and of I course think... it depends how you do it. That's yeah, of depends. course another issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds like you had the conversation. Everybody in the group knew what's going on. Everybody got to speak out, and that's how you kind of do it. Nobody should leave the group without somehow having this openness. That creates the tension and conflict. My mm -hmm. struggle, actually, like my big struggle, my whole leadership, as I told, like started with a crisis because. Our previous very good leader didn't want to lead anymore. And then the group where I was the newest member came and the youngest member, very good combination to get respect. Like uh, I, I had to start leading it because nobody else would. And what actually happened pretty naturally is that the group, group members who could not somehow feel all right under my leadership started leaving and i started recruiting new people and somehow eventually the group came came to be around my leadership but in the early years that was what what really needed to be done that people who didn't feel fine and could not get over the fact that i'm now the youngest and the most inexperienced leading the group they they left and they found different ways to express themselves and i'm totally fine with that it's been it's because then now with all at the moment i feel like we have built a very secure group and everybody knows what they do and i actually plan to kind of give up more on my leadership and start co-leading instead of leading alone my because mm -hmm. that feels now now like the right decision at this time and mm -hmm. but yeah my struggle but my struggle my biggest struggle is my i have a very bad and very bitchy mother role in me i mm -hmm. <laughs> if if i do everything and people come to the rehearsal and they haven't done the things they promised i have kind of this uh, passive somewhat, aggressive kind of uh, passive attitude. passive Passive aggressive and a very mm -hmm. strong, they call it the resting bitch face, like uh -huh. okay. where I really stare at people until they feel very bad about themselves. <laughs> <laughs> that, that I try to avoid that, but that's, that's really something that I have uh, strongly in me, this martyr role. And mm -hmm. it really, as a leader, it can be very toxic if it comes out in the wrong places. So that's something I always mm -hmm. need to listen to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, if you want to add to that, to a situation where you had to deal with uh, something that was challenging, then uh, we can hear. I, I, I'm just sitting and I'm listening and I'm just wondering, I feel like we have a shift now in our like in before we have a kind of talking about, now we are talking from our guts and from our stories. And it takes the the whole meeting, I'm feeling that it's kind of have a, have a turning point. And I, 
I just I'm wondering how how long are we going to yeah 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 I'm uh, how much we have and I think this is kind of a another meeting I mean now wow every everything has wow the stories are so yeah. uh, I, have, I, have to I, say... I just want to ask about the timing mm -hmm. yeah so we are basically around now we, we uh, that was my plan that now we're going to start so I wanted to ask if there's something else someone wants to say and I wonder like move to the um, last section of the because it uh, it was a bit longer than I expected but I'm glad because I think we said a lot of uh, very important and valuable things so maybe I'll, I'll already ask you some of my um, the, the last things I think we should um, address in this talk um, I, I wanted to ask you what should we pay attention these days as leaders because um, we all know that the playback world has changed a lot dramatically and there's new challenge. Many groups, I think, um, was, were going through many changes. Some, um, some groups were affected in, um, in a negative way by this whole uh, situation in the world, by not being able to, to meet and, and so on. But some really thrived through this um, through this crisis that we are all going through. Um, and I wanted to ask you, what do you think? What do we need now? Um, what should we pay attention as leaders? I know it's a big transition from uh, what we have just uh, talked about, but I think um, looking at the new year, I think it's important to touch on that. I can maybe answer from kind of what it has meant for me, because I feel like this is a moment where different groups have very different needs and somehow people react to change differently and it's very important to reflect how you are with this change and what you want to do kind of create your vision of what kind of play and check if the group agrees with that because it's a totally new for example our group has chosen not to perform on zoom not to practice zoom playback theater but this year we are doing uh, mostly work with ourselves and reflect so that after after we kind of go back into performing we are more deep and at the moment we are uh, having a workbook about uh, like white supremacy and somehow understanding our privilege and we are an all white group that is trying to somehow understand what's our position in the world and what all these hidden structures and it has felt like a good time to now because there's more peace there's more time somehow to do this kind of little work so for us it has been a very good choice to not kind of just push push us into the zoom direction but just to do a little more reflection inside the group and i feel like if i would have pushed the group no now now we do zoom and now we start performing and we do this i think i would have somehow at least with this group lost the connection to the group and everyone is now happy to do this different kind of work even if of course the sad thing is that it doesn't pay so so this it means no gigs no nothing but people were still wishing for that and i think it, it's very important now to listen to your group in terms of what sort of things they also want to do and try to find a match with yourself and the group. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you don't want to add anything to that, then... Um... Well, no, I'm, I think, again, I'm thinking, 
what goals do you have as a leader now? So Yori, you're very clear. You're saying we don't go, we don't want to do Zoom. So if I, as a leader thinking, well, let's uh, train for Zoom playback. And I think maybe Michael, you're doing that with your group. Then you start to, to train your group with Zoom playback. So I, I just think you need, if you still have a passion or vision, you just need to adapt it to the possibilities you have now, or maybe create some new possibilities. So basically, I think you need the same skills as in pre-corona times where mm -hmm. we could meet. Uh, I feel like for me, yeah, I still, I'm, I'm surprised that it works playback on Zoom and I kind of also started to kind of like it but my heart of course goes for life I mean mm -hmm. I uh, I love to meet people in life and I love to to touch and feel and smell them and interact so I realized that as a leader I have been like Aviva more being sitting on the tree and watching the others instead of flying around mm -hmm. I want to add to this that the question that I was asked myself and also I was asked by playbackers, it's, um, we are, and I think it was one of the questions that you asked me in our first interview, what's happening now with the Zoom? And my first, you know, like, when was it? Eight months ago? Yeah, it was just when this whole thing started. I said, I, I don't know, but it's changing. Something new is coming. So let's see. We have to, I didn't know it will take so much time. So so today, if I'm talking about, and playback Zoom is a, it's a, it's a phenomena that is, that is, uh, that is happening now. It's there. There is playback Zoom. You you want it, you don't want it, you can do it, you cannot do it, but there is playback Zoom. So what I'm asking myself, what kind of adaptations I can do that I will, uh, that it will work on Zoom? What values, what ethics do I don't give up? Like this is something that I will not give away, I will not give up, I will not, you know, the, the, the um, respect mm. to the teller, the safety of the teller, or, but how do you do it? You, you don't sit beside him. So what are all the solutions to keep the values of playback, the main principles of playback? And uh, on the other hand, what adaptations can you do not to do the same because it's a different artistic tool. So what adaptations can you do to use effectively the new, um, the new tool, the camera, the, you know, all the, all the components of the Zoom that you don't do the same because you cannot do the same, but it is serving the teller, the audience, the actors, and you still see it and you say, yes, this is playback. Mm -hmm. There is the personal story in the center. There is the respect. There is the playing back of the main parts of the story. And what, and it's not, um, I, I'm not going now to make all the list what is this not, but I'm asking myself, do, what do I keep and what do I, what do I can give up from the ritual? Like, I don't sit beside the teller and it works. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I think. So I, there are things that we discover only by doing it, but there are things that I will not give up. Mm -hmm. So this is what I am. And for some people, this is a new, like they feel great with Zoom. And some people say, no, this is not, for some people, this is a discovery. They are, they are frozen on stage and they are blooming on Zoom. So, and also some conductors or some leaders, they, they love Zoom and some say, no, I need to touch and smell. And uh, mm -hmm. so it's okay. Like we have different styles of uh, leadership. We have different, 
different uh, different things that we can offer or do on Zoom. Okay. Yeah, Michael, you wanted to add something? Yeah. Yes. Um, I, I I think I go back to the roots. I think this is an especially um, precious and dangerous time. Uh, many, many opportunities, but yet also dangerous. Um, I think it's a time for us to really take care of our roots for many different perspectives and levels. I think I very much agree with what Yuri is saying, listening to the individual members of our groups at this point in time, I think it's really crucial because they form the roots of the practice in, in a group. Um, you know, it, it, we are as a whole world undergoing trauma. We are in many cases very alone. Um, some of us have energy for online, some of us would rather not. And that also takes its toll. That also changes our relationships with one another. And as leaders, how do we then um, think about that, um, take care of that, make things happen, um, still maintain connections and even try to grow it. But at the same time, I'm also aware that, you know, not every playbacker, not everybody is on, is online, it's on the internet. How do we then reach out to the playbackers who are not going to come on Zoom, who are, you know, we, in, in the last year or so, how many core trainings have we had around the world? How many um, advanced classes have we had around the world? Are we losing the opportunity to teach about the three circles or narrative reticulation because now everybody's experimenting with the theater part online with the performance part online so i think this is also that's why i think it's also dangerous because you know i think when i saw karin's work online when i saw aviva's work online they are quality because they've had the experience and the foundation to think about what else can we do instead of inviting somebody to the chair what else can we do to think about the process to make a safe space? Uh, but that also comes with experience and a grounding in, in playback itself. So in this period of time where everybody's jumping online, do we still make time and space for the roots of playback, for the theoretical parts of playback, for what makes playback as a process work? Um, you know, some, some of the performance that I've watched has been about the presentation of different rituals, different forms online. And I, I've seen shows where there hasn't been one form that's been repeated, you know, and we're keeping, it, we keep getting surprised, you know, to me, that's not always safe uh, for the people that are watching also. Uh, so, so I think we are at a crucial time um, globally, um, but also as uh, individual people. Um, you know, Debbie Eden from the States, uh, with the Center for Playback, she always says, take care of the humans first. Uh, I think this is especially important because you know, humans are the foundation of playback. Humans will hold the traditions, the rituals, the stories of how playback came to be. And this is a big point, a big milestone in, 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 in the history of playback. Um, and it occurred to me earlier in the conversation that we've had you know, good examples of, of leaders who let go and yet have something carry on. You know, our founders, Jonathan and Joe, you know, they started, well, when IPTN was started and then Jonathan stepped down. When he started the school, it became the center and then he stepped down. When Jonathan, a few years ago, stepped down from teaching leadership and now leadership is still happening and hopefully happening post COVID. So we, we have good examples, um, but I think it's also a matter of letting go um, and still creating enough roots so that the leaves can flower. Um, you know, in playback now, I think the leaves are really flowering very well and in many different directions, many experimentation. But we have to take care and pay attention to the roots even now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I, I just want to add, I was uh, listening to you and I was thinking that um, uh, I think this time especially was so um, shocking to the playback community because I think we had a lot of truth that we were 
we we learned that those are the truth like we must sit next to the teller and so on and now we are finding out oh actually we can do good playback without all those uh, rituals actually that we were um, used to do and we are re-examining those uh, things through because the situation is now um took this turn and, and yeah we, we want to adapt the rituals um, yeah. with first considering and knowing why the reasons for those rituals were there. So if somebody was on the chair and the audience can see, it's kind of like, oh, there's, there's an element of witnessing. Yes. We have to adapt. So what I'm saying is experimentation is great, yet at the same time, why were the rituals there in the first place? I think we need to know that. Then mm -hmm. we can adapt it. Know the yeah. rules. Yeah, I, I meant more in like in an existential level that we are now kind of um, the, the fact that we are even like having a discussion about those things that were once we never discussed those things. I think that's also kind of uh, shaking the system a little bit in, in, in some in some ways. And I think it's actually I think it's good. It can serve us if we'll be if we'll know how to handle this discussion and how to do it wisely. So um, I think we are, we are really um, need to, to wrap up at this point. Um, maybe I'm going to ask you something different than what I was actually planning to ask you. I want to ask you, what, uh, what do you take from this talk, from this conversation? If there is something that you, that you learned, I learned a lot of things, but uh, I want to ask you something that you take, something that stays, that maybe going to stay with you after yes Kari. Kari. i think uh, the picture from michael about the roots will mm -hmm. stay with me and it, it it makes me think it makes me ask questions which i like it's not just an answer so i'll i'll keep that what does it mean what are the roots do they change how about growing new roots? Where would they be? What would they be? So this, this metaphor of caring for roots, that's what I take from this, amongst mm. other things, but that's the one that sticks out for me. Thank you. Somehow, I think this is something that we all agree on, and it has been brought up many times in different forms in this conversation, but what Michael said last, I think, is really that if you want to break the rules, know the rules and know how they were created and why. And then you can break all the rules because you know why, what you are doing and why. And it's still somehow respectful to the original idea of the rules. I think that's, that's something that is very good to keep in mind in times of change. Mm -hmm. Aviva, you're on mute. To this about breaking, changing the rules, and I, I want to emphasize something that there is something that is unbreakable and unchanging playback. That if you change it, even if you have the best reasons to do it, it's not playback anymore. So this is uh, important for me to remember, and I'm just taking something that is that it was more when we started to tell our stories and I was thinking how much, and it doesn't matter if we are leaders, uh, how much time we are leaders, what is our experience, that for me it's to remember that we always deal with group and we have to understand group dynamic and really to have even professional understanding of what is group dynamic and how we deal with because it doesn't matter what playback if it's professional or it's a community or it's or it's therapeutic or it's just for your friend it's always dealing with a group and uh, this is something that i think that all uh, playback leaders should have a good training in group dynamics and this is also something that will help me to deal with something that is in competition with me or they are in competition with each other 
or the or the or the um, um, competition in the group, or if they are coming on time, if they are preparing homework, all these issues are universal group issues, and it doesn't matter if it's playback or another group. And in playback, it's kind of a little more uh, tricky because we have also the playback principles or, or uh, values about inclusiveness and non-judgmental, which are coming sometimes in conflict in taking care of the group. So, uh, so understanding and knowing professionally, and I'm saying professionally, group dynamics helps a lot to lead the group and to become a better leader. So this is what I'm taking. And uh, I think that I'm ready to sit on my tree. <laughs> well, I, I feel like this has been a kind of supervision for me. Um, you know, I'm taking away the feelings that I have from listening to different things that you guys have said. Um, and I'm just going to use one example because of time. But when Karin was talking about, um, you know, the wrong member at the wrong time and having to leave, you know, I, I feel like I think a lot of probably all of us have gone through that and I can see where that's coming from. So when I heard the stories that everybody has shared, I'm like, oh, yes, yes, I remember that now. It's almost like we're doing playback for ourselves and, and, and it feels very therapeutic for me as well. Um, so thank you for all of you uh, to share your stories and, and for Noah to bring us together. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for, for saying yes to this. I'm really, yeah, I feel I learned a lot. And thank you all for your sincere and honest answers. I'm sure it's going to serve many, many people hearing you and seeing that all of you are, uh, we're going through struggles and um, that this journey, we are all sharing, we are all sharing the same journey, basically. So, yeah, I, I just feel very lucky and privileged to be to be here with you. Oh, thank you, Yori. It's a nice, uh, a nice picture. <laughs> Unless I'm in the middle and it looks just like bloody hands. I was yeah. <laughs> trying to also to find something with light. So <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, light. That's uh, we need. We need light for the next year. We need yeah. to to have hearts and lights. And um, Karin, I don't know if you're trying to say something. You're on mute. Ah, no. Okay. No, she's trying to find. And uh, Noah, uh, you need to put more light on your face now. I know, I know. It's uh, yes. I'm struggling here with the sun. Like I'm trying. I didn't. I should have figured that out. We're usually never doing mind. that never. Yeah, <laughs> without never cameras, mind. and now it's uh, okay. I'm learning. We're in a learning process. Okay. So um, thank you very much, and wishing you all a great. Um, ending for 2020 and uh, uh, a wonderful 2021. It was great to meet Thank you. you all. Yes, yeah. have a nice Thank ending you. of the year. <laughs> yeah, and after yeah. Okay. And Noah, yeah. Noah, Noah, you yeah. can create some kind of leaders group to share, uh, to share stories. Um, yeah, let's see. Let's see. Um, we're we're going to start with this thing, and uh, let's see where it's all going. I I'll be very honored uh, to to do more of those things. I learned a lot, and it was, uh, as I said, uh, mm. um, a great privilege and a learning experience. Okay, yeah, thank you all. Let go. Let go. Let's enough go. is yeah. enough. Bye bye. Aviva, Aviva. Nice to see you. Super. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, everybody. Take care, Thank everybody. You. Thank you. I don't know. Bye. I don't know when I'm gonna publish it. I uh, I'm gonna listen to it and see if it's all working good. good. Yeah, you can do some editing. I might do some editing. Yeah, I hate it. Make us sound smart. <laughs> <laughs> that will be difficult. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sorry, bye, everybody. <laughs> bye. 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 bye, -bye.